We'll move it on because on Thursday, UEFA President Michel Platini announced plans for a new Nations League tournament starting in 2018. Tony O'Donoghue examines how this new tournament will affect the boys in green. Even in Ireland, the lure of the friendly international among supporters had begun to fade, mirroring a trend around Europe. So this week, UEFA, at its Congress in Kazakhstan, approved a new Nations League. Friendlies in the main will become a thing of the past. Some might say, good riddance. Making friendly dates more competitive was a big, was a big issue. Um, we all know the friendly dates, sometimes are difficult to fill. Uh, we can't get to play England and Germany or France um, every, every time you, you look for a friendly date. It all kicks off in September 2018, before the traditional qualifying campaign for Euro 2020, which will begin in early 2019. Supporters may have to save up their spending money. All of Ireland's qualifiers will be played within the calendar year. The, the clever part, Tony, is playing the League of Nations first because it gives you a sense of where you're going to finish, if, you, if, you, if you're going to get promoted, if you're going to win your tournament. So that's then set aside. You then go and you play in your qualifying tournament uh, and if you don't qualify, your League of Nations results come back into play to give you your second chance. So it's not like they're being played side by side. League of Nations first, the normal competitive route secondly, and after that uh, it determines whether you're back in for a second bite of the cherry or hopefully we're not, hopefully we're through, um, through the Aubrey route and we're there without having to rely on our, on our League of Nations performances. The 54 UEFA member associations will be split into four divisions and on current rankings, Ireland would be in the second division. Each division will have four mini-leagues, so Ireland will play three other similarly ranked teams home and away between September and November 2018. However, 20 of the 24 finalists will still qualify in the usual way. If a country has already qualified through the traditional route, their place will go to the team below. If not, countries like Ireland, through the Nations League, will still get a second chance. Yes, and by the way, if you didn't catch that first time around, you can, of course, uh, review it again on the RTE player. And I feel we may have to do that ourselves. But first of all, Michael, as an international team manager, the landscape is going to change for international football. Yeah from what, have you, what you've gathered so far, is this going to be beneficial? Um, well, I'm trying to understand that it's going to be a challenge <laughs> and uh, common sense tells me not to look too far at 2018 as well. But um, I think that, uh, yeah, I think friendly internationals, no one benefits from them. The players don't benefit, the supporters don't benefit, the event doesn't benefit. And I, I think so anything that can be done to improve that will be beneficial. You know, competitive fo international football is what we want at all times. So I think this is, uh, it's a little bit left field in what they're trying to do. If they can make it work, then, you know, why not look at it and, and see, see how things develop. And if there's something at the end of it with the possibility of qualification, I think that's something that everyone wants. Yeah, it means essentially, Richie, that there'll be no such thing as a, an international friendly anymore, that there'll be a competitive edge. And surely that's a good thing. But the question is, does it make it difficult for people like Michael, where when not giving fringe players a chance because they'll be going with their strongest team whenever they can? Well, I think the, the first point in relation to the hopeful removal or the minimising of pretty meaningless friendly internationals, that's a good thing yeah. because we were seeing a load of games recently and we're not the only country affected by this where you have a kind of weakened squad put together, numerous substitutions, kind of players pulling out with phantom injuries, half-empty stadiums, reduced ticket prices. No one really gets too excited about them. So if they're gone, that's a good thing. One of the things, though, there's a, there's a new entry into the, to, to the major tournaments. I, I don't know if it's necessarily a good thing that teams will qualify for the finals of, say, the Euros if they're at the bottom, bottom rung of international football. I, I don't know. Obviously, those countries themselves benefit. Yeah. I'm not sure. But it creates a slightly manufactured situation. Which well, is it, I, saying, I could yeah. see why it would work yeah. for everyone because the smaller mm. nations get a chance to sit at a table that they wouldn't have a chance mm. under the current system. The bigger nations then play all these friendlies, if you want to call them that, against teams of their mm. calibre, which is a better TV money, more, more attendances and all that. So there's a lot of reasons to support the thing. One thing is I just wonder what advantage would it be having a really weak team in a major tournament? And, and I suppose from the club's point of view, uh, 
they may not be as cooperative as the international associations might like them to be. Well, I think it's going to be more games where they'll have to release their players because for some of those internationals previously, you know, there would always be a, a dodgy hamstring or a dodgy calf muscle where the players would pull out late notice, particularly for the summer tours. That's, you know, that's been happening for years now. So that can't happen anymore if it suddenly becomes a different qualifying campaign, albeit not as important as a, as a European championship, but, you know, something that gives that opportunity to that country to qualify. So I think it raises a lot of questions. I mean, certainly you can't knock... UEFA or all the individual countries yeah. for trying to be progressive. I think it's the right thing to do, but I think there's a, it's probably in its formative stages and there's a lot more dialogue to be had before it becomes clear.